All right, you all. So it's the beginning of the year. And you all know that I am taking very seriously the build of the KSD notch. And so on today, I am going to discuss the Ford Racer Control Pack versus Holly. Stay tuned. All right, so what's happening to everybody? It's your boy, Kenneth Sean, with the world famous, do, 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 the most incredible, the undeniable, built versus bought. So as I'm taking you all along this journey of me building or rebuilding uh, the Mustang that I have, the Fox body that I have, I had to make a lot of decisions and do a lot of research on the decisions that I made. One of those decisions was the engine management system. And for you all that don't know, um, I am building a 5.2 Illuminator. Well, I have a 5.2 Illuminator already built and ready. And I am going through the process of getting and finalizing all the parts that I need. One of those parts was choosing a engine management system. And there were a lot of options out there, but I narrowed it down to two and chose one. On today, I am going to give you all the pros and cons of a Ford Racer Control Pack as it relates to this setup, but then also using a Holly engine management system. And the reason I just say Holly engine management system is because they have several of them that you can choose from, but I'm going to narrow it down today so that you can have an understanding on what's going to work for your build. So let's really talk about the stuff that really matters. Some of you all are doing this at home. Some of you all are really concerned about the how easy it's going to be to make this work for yourself. And you may not want to shop or anybody to do it. So let's kind of focus on and do a side by side comparison of the pros and cons of both. How easy it is, hard, et cetera. What, are, what works, what doesn't work. Let's talk about that. So the first thing I want to talk about is the four race of control pack. And let's talk about how fast can you be running if you do the four race of control pack. The pros it's probably the most plug and play situation that you can use or engine management system that you can use. Uh, shout out to my man, Fox Body D, as we were kind of talking about this and discussing this at one point. He said, you got to think about it like this. Ford spent millions of dollars developing um, that control pack or developing that software. And pretty much it's probably going to be the easiest route to go. And depending on what you do, it could be the cheaper route. But let me give you all a few bullet points of what it does. Pros, most plug and play filling for a Coyote or an Illuminator swap. Designed around factory style sensors and throttle strategies. Typically fewer tuning decisions to get it driven clean. This is for the four race control pack. Cons, less, flexi less, less flexibility if your combo stops being typical. Big boost, oddball, oddball fueling, custom strategies. And so... For the majority of people that are actually doing this, these swaps, I'm going to be honest with you. The majority of people are using control packs. They're using control packs. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, they're, they're the guys that are tuning it, the majority of people that are tuning it are using that software. And you can put like a HP tuner set up on it and, man, be able to go from there. So um, those are kind of the pros and cons as it relates to how fast you can be running. Now, let's focus on the Holly. Holly. Pros. Holly harness base maps can still be fast to fire, especially if your setup is custom. They have great support for swapping into anything. Clean wiring options configurable. The cons more setup steps and configuration choices up front inputs, outputs, safety limits, fuel system type, etc. Bottom line, if your goal is to start it, drive it, troubleshoot it like OEM, then you probably should go with the four race control pack. If your build is more custom, Holly becomes easier over the whole project. Let's talk about tuning. For performance, the pros as factory style behavior tends to be easier to live with on the street. Many tuners are familiar with Ford logic. Cons, you are living inside Ford's guardrails. Less freedom on advanced strategies. So like I said, this is probably why this works for the majority of people who are not trying to go that far with their bill, but they just want to have a coyote swap and make it run. Control pack. Let's talk about Holly. Pros, huge DIY and pro tuner ecosystem in the performance world. 
powerful self-learning, especially the Terminator X. And I know people who have done a coyote swap with the Terminator X inside of their car. And yes, it, it, it changed a lot. Um, and for getting fuel in close quickly, excellent data logging, quick change workflow, cons. The flexibility is also the trap. A sloppy setup can drive sloppy. If you want to learn and or plan to evolve the build, Holly is better long game or for the long term. Let's talk about boost control. For performance, pros, works great for straightforward NA or mild boost setups, generally stable and predictable. Cons, advanced boost by gear, dome pressure strategies, traction style, torque management, Advanced safeties equals not its strong lane. Flex fuel support can be limited depending on specific kit tune approach. Let me say this again. Flex fuel support can be limited depending on the specific kit tune approach. Now, the pros as it relates to Holly. It's built for power adders, boost by gear, boost by speed, closed loop strategies, ECU dependent, flex fuel, stage injection, Nitrous control, CO2 control, multiple fuel pumps, fail safes, lean protection, oil pressure, fuel pressure versus boosts, coolant temp, IAT limits, etc. This is the save your motor advantage when you're leaning on a 5.0 or 5.2. Cons, you must wire configured senses correctly to get the safety nets. Bottom line, if your Coyote or Illuminator is getting a blower or turbo and you care about projection and adjustability... Holly wins. Now we could go down transmit control. I'm going to kind of uh, skip that one, but I do want to talk about street legality. <laughs> all right. Cause some of you all are in different places in the world and you still have to get, you know, tests and things of that nature, pollution tests. I don't know, but let's talk about some street legality inspections and OBD two expectations for performance. The pros Typically, the better choice if you want an OEM-like approach and you're trying to keep things closer to factory. Cons, it all depends on where you live at. The state, county, rules, country, whatever. It just all depends on where you are. Holly, pros, ton of performance capability. Cons, if you're in an area with strict OB2 emissions checks, standalone ECUs can complicate life. If you need to keep the swap as inspection friendly as possible, the control pack is the safer route. Now let's talk about future growth. As it relates to Ford uh, performance, pros, great if the combo is largely set it and forget it. Cons, less scalable when your bills turns into more sensors, more strategies, more features. Holly, pros, add sensors, add strategies, add control without changing the whole approach. Better platform ECU when you know you'll keep upgrading. Cons, You'll spend more time nerding out, which is either a pro or con, depending on who you are. So to finalize both as it relates to pros and cons, and then I want to kind of tell you all about the decision that I made. For performance control pack, pros, OEM-like drivability and cold start manners. Generally simpler to install, fewer setup decisions, great for NA, mild boost, street bills. Often better fit if inspections, OBD expectations matter. The cons. Less control for serious boost, flex race strategies, not as expandable for sensors, safeties, add-ons, can become restrictive as the build evolves. Holly, and they're going off the Terminator X or Dominator Pros, best in class control for abuse, flex fuel, safeties, and race features. Strong data logging, data logging, tuning workflow, highly configurable I.O. for custom swaps. Ideal for this build will grow plans. Cons, more set of complexity, wiring sensor strategy matters, bad configuration equals bad results, standalone can, complica can complicate inspections in strict areas. So now let's talk about as it relates to me and what I'm going to choose. I thought I was going to stop this video originally and I was just going to show you in the next video what I was going to choose, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you all now. Um, after further, further consideration and heavy consideration, it was one thing that really made me make the decision that I was going to make. I decided to go with Holly, but not just the Holly Terminator X. I'm actually going with a Dominator kit. And it's for two reasons. Um, first reason was that I was used to the Terminator X on my previous build. 
and I really liked everything. I know I could, and I really wanted to keep my 12.3 inch screen. I know I could run a standalone harness to make it work with a control pack, but this is just a little bit more of a plug and play if I go with that. I also wanted BCT control, and you can get that with the Ford Racing control pack with no problem, but you cannot get it with any other Holly uh, setups outside of the Dominator. There is no BCT, BCT control with the Terminator, the Terminator X, any of that. You can only do it with a Dominator, okay? So because of that, it takes the price up dramatically. I'm just being honest with you. Like, all in on a Ford Racing control pack, somewhere around maybe three. That's with the control pack harness and you getting a HP tuners uh, set up. You somewhere around 27 to three. It just all depends on who you got it from, where you got it from. But a dominator setup, I'm just going to say look it up. With BCT control, harness and all that, uh, it's much more than the original price that I said. But the last reason and the, one of the main reasons that I really wanted to go uh, with the dominator was one of the cons that was on the four race control pack. And that con was flex fuel capability. The, the state that I live in, when I lived in Chicago, I felt like E85 was available everywhere. And it was, for lack of better words, pure. Um, nine times out of ten, it tested to be close to 85 uh, than not. Out here, we range between 68, E68, and E72. And because I can put that flex fuel sensor and it reads it through the actual fuel lines, through the holly, it can adjust the tables, it can adjust the timing, it can adjust to whatever. And that was one of the things that I felt like I like that safety aspect. But I also like the fact that if I just want to run 93 and get that miles per gallon and just drive around, I can do it. But then when I want to go over to E85, I don't have to drain the tank. I can literally just put the pump in and it'll pick it up. And as is it as the holly is reading the fuel, it will adjust. And so that adjustability to me was very, very key. And then also, um, it's also a lot of tuners, as much as a lot of tuners work with the control pack, a lot of tuners work with Holly as well. Um, it's one of the ones that's the safest to use. And so that is the decision that I made. And so in the next video, I'm going to show you all of the Holly parts uh, that I have. And I got a surprise in that video, too. It's, it's a little bit more than just that, but I'm kind of going to show you all that. But um let me know your thoughts in the comments. I want to know what it is that you're running. If you have one, if you have a Dominator, if you have a Terminator, whichever one. But um, let me know in the comments. If you even have a control pack, I want to see what you got in the comments. But thank you all for tuning in. And if you like this video, do me a favor. Make sure you like and subscribe. It's your boy Kim Sean with Built vs. Bots. I am out.